Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This is the first video on a further look at financial statements. And in this video, we will recognize the components of a classified balance sheet. Uh, we will calculate and interpret ratios to assess a company's profitability. We will describe how a retained earnings statement correlates with a statement of stockholders equity. We will calculate and interpret ratios to evaluate a company's liquidity and solvency through its balance sheet. And finally, we will utilize the statement of cash flows to assess a company's solvency. Please like, subscribe and share my channel to search for accounting lessons and hit the notification bell button to alert you for the latest video. For all of your questions, comments and suggestions, please put them in the comment section below. And for webinar and guest speaker invites, please send me a message at accountingamir at gmail.com. Accounting is a K. We hope that this video helps students in their academic development and teachers in enhancing their lesson plans and teaching methodologies. So uh, that is how this video is, uh, is, is designed. We are going to talk about the classified balance sheet where we will talk about the different types of assets and the liabilities and the stockholders equity. We will use the financial statements to calculate ratios through income statement, stockholders equity, and we'll be using a classified using balance sheet and a statement of cash flows. Finally, we will be talking about how we report the financial statements. What is the standard setting environment? What are the qualities of a useful information? What are the assumptions, principles, and constraints of accounting? So the, the, these are the things we are going to discuss in this video. And let us start with a classified balance sheet. So balance sheet presents a snapshot at a point in time. If you look into the balance sheet, balance sheet is always stated as, as on and the specific date. Against this, when we look into the income statement, we are going to record, we are going to specify the date as for the month or year ending. So that is for a specific period of time and balance sheet is at a, a specific point of time. And we prepare these balance sheets to improve our understanding the company's group similar assets and similar liabilities together and as you can see uh, what we mean by grouping is uh, all there are we group the assets and the category of current assets long-term investments property plant and equipment and intangible assets while liabilities are grouped into current liabilities and long-term liabilities and then we have the stockholders equity. So that is how we classify a balance sheet and let us talk more about it. So here you can see that he, this is a classified balance sheet. Uh, and here right now they are, we are talking about assets. You can see that there is a long list of current assets. Uh, we have long term investments. We have property, plant and equipment and in the end we have intangible assets. So that is how we prepare or we are present our assets in a balance sheet. We start with the current assets followed by long term investments, property, plant and equipment and intangible assets. A balance sheet also includes the liabilities and stockholders equity and this comprises of current liabilities and again you can see that there are a long list of current liabilities there will be long-term liabilities as well 
Now these are when we say current, they are for the current year in the consideration and long term is something that is more than one year. In the stockholder equity, we record the common stock and retain earnings. So these are the two things. If we add them together, we call them as stockholders equity and the total of liabilities and stockholders equity must be equal to the total of the assets. If the two totals are not equal, then there is a mistake. Uh, then let us look into the different uh, groups of the assets. You can see we have the current assets and these assets, these are the assets that the company expect to convert to cash or use up within one year or the operating cycle, whichever is longer. Because depending upon the nature of the business, the operating cycle is going to vary from industry to industry and company to company. Operating cycle means the average time it takes from the purchase of material inventory or raw material to the collection of cash from the customers. So these are the common types of current assets. It may be cash. Obviously, there may be two types of investments. Here we are talking about short term investments. Those investments that are going to be made for a period less than one year. Account receivables, inventories and prepaid expenses. So you can see this is a simple a uh, group of current assets for Southwest Airlines and these values are in millions. We have cash, short term investments, account receivable, inventories, prepaid expenses and other current assets. You can see that the companies list current account asset accounts in the order or they expect to convert them into cash. You can see the most liquid form is the cash. So cash is on the top. And the next one that can be converted into cash is short term investment followed by account receivable, inventories, prepaid expenses and other current assets. So we, 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 we record the current assets on the basis of how liquid those assets are. Then we have the long term asset investments and when we say long term investments, they are also called as investments also. So investments may be in the stocks or bonds of another companies that may be held for more than one year. Now you can see we are talking about in stock and bonds that are invested in other corporation. The company is making buying those stocks or bonds. Now there are other long term assets such as land building that a company is not currently using in its operating activities. And there may be long term notes receivables as well. That is maybe the company has given a loan to their employees or someone for a period of more than one year, then they are not current assets, they are long term investments. Then we have property, plant and equipment. Now, property, plant and equipment is also called fixed assets in some cases or in some balance sheets or they are also called plant assets. They have long useful lives, more than one year, maybe 10 years, 20 years, even more than that. So they are currently used in operations. They include land, building, equipment, delivery vehicle, furniture, etc. And on all these long term assets, there is depreciation is charged except for land. We don't charge depreciation on land. And we have another interesting terminology that is accumulated depreciation. That is the total amount of depreciation expensed thus far in the assets life. Suppose the uh, annual depreciation on a asset is 100 reals and 
uh, the life of the asset is 20 years so the accumulated depreciation after five years will be 500 then uh, we have property plant and equipment and you can see that is how we are going to record them and from this we subtract the depreciation and this is the book value of the assets on a specific point of time there may be intangible assets and they are also called uh, as, as other assets in you can find this term in some balance sheets and these assets or intangible assets do not have a physical substance like furniture or equipment. Examples may be goodwill, patents, copyright, trademarks, trade names, etc. So these are all intangible assets. A classified balance sheet will have liabilities and in those li those are split into two groups, current liabilities so current liabilities are the obligations that the company has to pay within the a year or operating cycle whichever is longer examples may be accounts payable salaries and wages payable notes payable interest payable income tax payable so all these are examples of current liabilities and they also include in our the current assets uh, current maturities of long-term liabilities that is if there is any long-term liability say for a period of 10 years and this 10 years are going to complete in the current year then these are also going to be classified as current liabilities because we have to pay them in the current year these are this is a snapshot of the current assets of one of the companies uh, then we have uh, as we say liabilities are also grouped as long-term liabilities now these are the obligation that our company is going to pay after one year they are not going to be paid in the current year like bonds payable mortgages payable long-term notes payable you can see here long term notes payable otherwise note payables are grouped with the current liabilities lease liabilities and pension liabilities the third component of a balance sheet is the stockholder equity and this has two items one is the common stock that is the investment of assets into the business by the stockholders in they may be buying the shares uh, and then there is a retained earning that is the income retained for use in the business it is not distributed to the shareholders uh, next we uh, come to using the financial statements and we use the financial statements through calculating ratios so ratios or ratio analysis Ex expresses the relationship among selected items of financial statement data it is simply a mathematical relationship between one quantity and another you will see we'll talk more about it as you progress in this video uh, so it is simply a mathematical relationship between say current assets and current liabilities it may be between debt and total assets so it is simply a relationship between two items uh, of the balance sheet or the income statement or the retained earning statement as the case may be obviously it is important that uh, um, to note that a single ratio by itself is not meaningful it has to be compared between x and y between two at least to make a rational analysis now uh, financial ratios are classified into three different types they may be profitability ratios liquidity ratios and solvency ratios now for profitability ratios 
दे मेजर द इनकम और ऑपरेटिंग सक्सेस ऑफ ए कंपनी फॉर ए गिवन पीरियड ऑफ टाइम देन लिक्विडिटी दे मेजर द शॉर्ट टर्म एबिलिटी ऑफ द कंपनी टू पे इट्स लाइबिलिटीज और द मेच्योरेटिंग मेच्योरिंग ऑब्लिगेशन एंड टू मीट अनएक्सपेक्टेड नीड्स फॉर कैश दैट इज वॉट वी डू फॉर द लिक्विडिटी रेशियोज एंड वेन इट कम्स टू सॉलवेंसी रेशियोज दे मेजर द एबिलिटी ऑफ द कंपनी टू सर्वाइव ओवर ए लॉन्ग पीरियड ऑफ टाइम दैट इज द मेन डिफरेंस बिटवीन लिक्विडिटी एंड सॉलवेंसी लिक्विडिटी इज ऑबियसली फॉर ए शॉर्ट पीरियड ऑफ टाइम दैट इज मिद इन अयर सॉलवेंसी आर फॉर ए पीरियड मोर दैन वन ईयर और लॉन्ग पीरियड ऑफ टाइम ना हियर वी हैव द इनकम स्टेटमेंट वी हैव द इनकम स्टेटमेंट फॉर बेस्ट बाय कंपनी वी हैव द रेवेन्यूज फॉर द ईयर टू थाउजेंड अलेवन एंड टू थाउजेंड टेन वैन वी प्रिपेयर द इनकम स्टेटमेंट we first record the revenues and then we record the set of expenses and revenue minus expense will give us the net income so you can see that for best buy company incorporation the income or the net income for 2010 was 1317 and for 2011 it is 1277 so the profit has or the net income has decreased in the year 2011 so profitability ratios they measure the operating success of a company for a given period of time <coughs> then uh, let us look into an example over here for profitability ratio we have the, we have to calculate the earning per share and that measures the net income earned on each share of a common stock now we have the net income for the two years and these values are taken from the income statement that that is over here 1277 and 1317 uh then uh may we we when we calculate this is the formula for earning per share we have the net income minus preferred dividends divided by average common shares outstanding so for the year 2011 the shares outstanding were and now you can see for the year 2010 the net income is 1317 uh there is no preference dividend so that's why we have zero and then we have the average common shares outstanding so we have the shares at the beginning of the year plus shares at the end of the year 414 plus 419 and we divide by 2 so the earning per share is 3.16 for the year 2010 and for the year 2011 it is 3.14 so what we can see is that the earning per share has decreased in the year 2011 and the reason is that the profit has decreased during this period you can see over here the for the year 2010 the income was 1317 here it has decreased by of 21277 so for the year 2014 stone land corporation reported net income of 26000 net sales is 400000 and average share outstanding is 6000 now here we are given the average shares uh, so we are not going to divide by 2 we simply record the average share there were preferred stock dividend of 2000 so that's why we have 2000 over here and you can see that we have the net income so the net income in this case is 26000 so the earning per share is 4 dollars per share Uh, then we have the statement of stockholders equity and most companies they use the statement of stockholders equity 
uh, rather than using a retained earning statement so they can report all changes in the stockholders equity and i will show you what we mean by this so we have the common stock and we have the retained earnings now the balance uh, on february 28 is 246 for and then they have issued additional common stock of 237 uh then uh, so the total is 483 they have issued additional common stock of 303 and they have repurchased the common stock so when they repurchase obviously the value has to be subtracted and the balance at february 26 2011 so this was in 2009 then we have in 2010 and this is on 2011 so the balance is 57 now now when we look into the retained earning we have obviously the opening or the beginning balance of the retained earning to this we add the net income and we subtract the dividend and uh, this is interesting i would like to emphasize we make other adjustments it is lying in in the year 2000 nine this is adjustments are to be added up and the reason may be that the, uh, the they have not correctly recorded the revenue or they have uh, the revenue was undervalued so they have to correct the number values and they have added over here against this you can see over here the other adjustments have been subtracted and not added and the reason may be that the expenses where no some expenses were not recorded or revenue was overvalued or over recorded as the case may be so other adjustments may be added or they may be subtracted as the case may be it depends upon situations then uh, what we can conclude from the statement of stockholders equity is that the common stock increased in the first year as the result of issuance of shares you can see that the common stock has increased uh, and then they decreased during the second year and the reason being that they have stock issued was smaller but then they have they have repurchased some of the stock and they have repurchased a big amount of common stock the the book they are paying the dividend each year um, so these are some of the interesting observations one can get make from the statement of stockholders equity now we are going to use a classified balance sheet in calculating our ratios and I would like to have a screenshot of this one to use it So we are going to determine the liquidity of a business to pay the of liquidities, the ability to pay the obligations that are expected to become due within the next year or operating cycle. And this liquidity is determined by calculating the working capital that is current assets minus current liabilities and working capital is the difference you can see between the current assets and current liabilities and if you can see over here the current assets for the year 2011 the current assets are 10473 and the current liabilities for the same year are 86.63 so current assets minus current liabilities will give us 
the working capital and if we divide the current assets by the current liabilities then obviously uh, we call this as current ratio it measures the short term ability to pay maturing obligations and to meet unexpected needs of cash and i will paste it again to show you more about it now we can see that the current assets are how much 10473 and the current liabilities are 8663 so what does it mean that for a current liability of 1 real the company has 1.21 of current assets to pay them off that means in case if the company has a good liquidity because they can pay as the amount becomes due now this was the situation for the year 2010 in 2 in 2011 sorry and in 2011 10 if we calculate current assets divided by current liabilities uh, it is 1.1821 that means the liquidity was not good in the year 2010 uh, it has improved in the year 2011 this is for some other company and they have 2 dollars of current assets to pay 1 dollar of current liability these are the industry averages so if we want to compare one point uh, the year the if we want to compare the liquidity of best buy it has improved from 2010 into in 2011 the liquidity has improved although if we compare it with the industry they are still below and they are obviously below by if they compare with another company as well another thing that we are going to a ratio that is going to be commonly used is the solvency that is the ability to pay the interest as it comes due to prepay the balance of a debt due at its maturity so it measures the ability of the company to survive over a long period of time that is what we calculate for the solvency ratios so some users they evaluate solvency using a ratio of liabilities divided by stockholders equity the higher this debt to equity ratio the lower is the solvency ratio because if the debts are increasing obviously the solvency of the company is decreasing let us look into this example um, so debt to total uh, to assets ratio measures measures the percentage of total financing provided by creditors rather than stockholders equity and i would like to paste it again so debt to assets ratio is total liabilities not current liabilities total liabilities divided by total assets and not current assets so we have total liabilities divided by total assets and the total liabilities are 10557 and the total assets are 17849 so you can see the uh, the debt um, to assets ratio for the year 2011 is 59 it was higher in the year 2010 so it has decreased that it means that the assets that the company is buying for that they are using 59% of debt so obviously if you look into with the industry it is better when it comes to industry norms but if you compare it with the other company it is the debt to asset ratio is not good 
because it is 59% while for other company it is just 42%. Now let us look into the comparison of the how we make an analysis of through ratios. We have the current ratio for the two companies. We have the debt to asset ratio for the two companies and earning per share as well. So what you can see is if we compare layer with stable, you can see layer has a higher liquidity because the current ratio is high at the same time. Uh, you can see if you look into the solvency the solvency is lower because um, lower this current ratio higher more liquidity with the but with the higher debt to assets ratio it has lower solvency now but we cannot compare we cannot talk about profitability with these numbers because information is not complete but we can see the, from these that the layer company has higher liquidity and lower solvency. Now, uh, in the statement of cash flows, cash, provi um, cash provided by the operating activities, they fail to take into account that the company must invest in new property, plant and equipment and must maintain dividends at current levels to satisfy investors. So free cash flow is a measurement to provide additional insight regarding a company's cash generating ability. So free cash flow is cash provided by the operations minus capital expenditure that is any investment done to buy by long term assets and minus cash dividends. So let us see how we use it. The MPC, they produced 10,000 personal computers. It reported 100,000 cash provided by operating activities. In order to maintain production at 10,000 computers, MPC invests 15,000 in equipment. So this is a capital expenditure it choose to pay 5000 in dividends to so calculate the free cash flow so the cash provided by the operating activities is 100000 and the expenditure that they have done on uh, capital expenditure they have done is 15000 let me put it down So cash provided by operation cash provided by operation is 10,000. They have purchased property, plant and equipment that is a capital expenditure and the decash dividend paid. So obviously that is equal to so free cash flow is equal to 80,000. Next, we talk about the financial reporting concepts. That is, uh, first we talk about GAAP. It is a set of rules and practices having substantial authoritative support that the accounting profession recognizes as a general guide for financial reporting purposes. And they are, I mean, it is interesting that more than 115 countries they use IFRS. So that's, these standard setting bodies are Security and Exchange Commission, Financial Accounting Standard Board, FASB, International Accounting Standard Board, IASB, and Public Company Accounting Oversight Board. So these are the four popular boards that they set standards accounting standards what we call them as GAAP generally accepted accounting principles now the these are the qualities the of a useful information they should possess two fundamental qualities it must be relevant and it should be a faithful representation and when we say relevance accounting information has a relevance 
if it makes a difference in a different in a business decision now information is considered relevant if it provides information that has predictive value and what we mean by this is that it helps to have accurate expectations about the future and has a confirmatory value that is it confirms or corrects prior expectations so when we say relevance two things are important it is it has the predictive value, predictive value and confirmatory value and this another important component is materiality that is a company specific aspect of relevance um an item is material when its size makes it likely to influence the decision of an investor or a creditor so the size like you see if you are talking about millions then it's just 1 real or 2 reals or 1 real or 2 dollars or 10 dollars even is not going to make any impact on your decision so you have to compare the size of um, of any item or material how what is its proportionate contribution in the overall decision so we are talking about relevance and the second thing we are talking about is faithful representation and faithful representation means that information accurately depicts what really happened so when we say pro faithful representation it must be complete nothing important has been omitted it is neutral and that is most important that it is not biased towards one position or another and it is free from error so these are the qualities uh, to enhance the qualities the um, these are the some of the important one comparability it results when different companies use the same accounting principles as i have told you more than 115 prints countries they use gaap information is verifiable that is if independent observers they use the same method as the investigator then they get similar results information has the quality of understandability if it is presented in a clear and concise fashion then we have consistency consistency it means that a company uses the same accounting principles and methods from year to year they don't change uh, there are different ways of evaluating uh, inventory or depreciation so but we use the same method each year to bring consistency in our reports or performance for accounting information to have relevance it must be timely it, it is you get this information before you make the decision and not after the decision is made there are some accounting assumptions and one of them is the monetary unit assumption that requires that only those things that can be expressed in money are included in the accounting records like salary paid it is going to be recorded because it has a there is a monetary unit but we do not record in our accounting records the employee satisfaction total number of employees or the percent percent of international employees it is not relevant because it they are not monetary units they are not measurable in terms of money then economic entity states that every economic entity can be separately identified you can see that ford chrysler general motors they all are identified as economic entities and they are separate uh and then we have another assumption is the periodicity that is state that the life of the business can be divided into artificial time periods it may be monthly quarterly half yearly and obviously most important annually Uh, another assumption is the going concern assumption that this the business will remain in operation for a foreseeable future it is not going to close down it is has a foreseeable future then there are some principles of financial reporting uh, one of them is the measurement principles 
and we are going to measure the on the basis of the historical cost uh, that is uh, we are going to record our assets at their cost then we have the fair value that indicates assets and liability should be reported at a fair value the price received to sell an asset or to settle a liability then full disclosure require that companies disclose all circumstances and events that would make a difference to financial statement users Finally, the cost constraint, accounting standards weigh the cost that companies will incur to provide the information against the benefits that financial statement users will gain from having the information. If the benefits are less than the cost of the information, there is no need to get, have that information because ultimately it will lead to losses then. So, uh, so this completes uh, the first video on a further look at financial statements. I hope you have enjoyed this presentation and if you found value in this video, then please like, subscribe and share my channel and hit the notification bell button to alert you for the latest video. For webinar and guest speaker invites, please send me a message at accountingamir at gmail.com. Remember, effective questioning brings insight which fuels curiosity, which cultivates wisdom. If you have any question or any suggestion regarding this session, then please put them in the comment box below or by email and inshallah I will reply you back. Thank you so much and happy learning.